Hi everyone, it's Heather. Welcome back into the Paper Castle and welcome to the first video in my new series. Uh, it's about this book. It's called Paper Transformed by Julia Andrus. And this book is chock full of different kinds of uh, surface techniques for paper. And I'm going to be taking you through this entire book and trying out every single technique in it. So, for today, I'm going to do the first one, and it's called Basic Water Marbling. I don't know how successful this is going to be, um, because I tried some experiments yesterday, and they didn't turn out very well, but we'll see what happens. Um, yesterday I used cold-pressed watercolor paper, 140 pounds. Uh, the author says that watercolor paper or rice paper is supposed to work best for this technique because they're supposed to grab onto the pigments. Um, but my paper wasn't grabbing very well. So I have some that's untreated and some regular cardstock that's untreated. And I have some that I treated here. You can't obviously see what I treated it with, but I treated it with a mordant solution, which is in this container right here. A mordant solution is basically just, um, you use two cups of hot water and two tablespoons of this. This is called alum. It's a salt. You can find it in the spice aisle in your grocery store. And when you dissolve the alum into the hot water and then brush or spray it onto your paper, it treats the paper and gives it a better surface for the pigments to hold onto. So I'm, I'm crossing my fingers today and hoping that more of the color grabs onto the paper today. Um, this is a very ancient technique. It's been around for hundreds if not thousands of years and um, this one's a little different than most marbling techniques because this is using just plain water. Most marbling techniques use some kind of sizing in the water which just means it, it thickens the water up a little so that the dyes actually stay on the top of the surface. Um, with water marbling it's a, a little more hit or miss than that. They don't always stay on top of the water. Um, I am going to put a link down below for a technique uh, from Japan. It's called suminagashi and it uses just plain water and um, special inks. And um, It's a great video. It's from Dick Blick and they have a kit where you can do suminagashi at home and it's, it's fascinating and it, I think it's under $20 and it's especially great if any of you gals out there have kids because um, it's, it's one of those wow techniques. You know, you don't need um, anything but a, a tray, some water, the inks, and some paper, and you get some great results. You know, kind of like spin art, that's fascinating. Well, this is the same kind of thing. So I'll put the link for that down below. And I'm going to get started. There's um, about, I guess, a quarter to a half an inch of water in here. And... I'm going to start out with what I started out with yesterday. I have these concentrated watercolors that I got at Michael's um, last year when they were on clearance. So I'm going to start with these and see what happens. So I'm just going to add some to the water. And I'm going to show you with the untreated paper, I'm going to show you what happens with it, and then I'll try and show you with the treated paper. Okay, this is untreated. The author says to put it straight down onto the bottom of the surface, and then pull it up. See, it didn't really do too much. So now I'm going to try it with the sizing or not the sizing, with the, um, the treated paper. And this got a little muddy, but I'm going to try and put some more yellow in here. See what happens. A little bit more green. Okay. Okay, I'm going to put the treated side face down into the water. And I'm hoping this works a little bit better. And no, <laughs> that's even worse than that. 
first <laughs> Oh my goodness. Okay. Well, so much for that. All right. I'm going to try something else now, guys. I'm going to go dump this. And I have another tray. Okay. So those don't work very well. But, um, I'm going to fill this next container with water. And I'm going to try some food coloring. See how that goes. I think I'm just going to put red and blue in here. I don't want it to get too muddled up. Okay. And again, I'm going to add, I'm going to use one of these pieces that I treated. See if I get any better results with this. So here we go. Cross your fingers. That's a little better. Okay, so I'm going to put this, set this aside to dry. Now, with normal marbling with sizing, you wouldn't push the paper all the way down to the bottom. You would just lay it on the surface. Um, but with this one, um, the author specifically said to put the paper, press the paper on the bottom of the tray for the best results. So I'm going to clean this one out and fill it up again. Okay. Okay, this time I'm gonna try Distress Reinkers, which I tried yesterday and I had some pretty good results with. These were actually the um, untreated piece of a uh, piece of watercolor paper that I tried yesterday. This was the first um, dunk into the water bath, and this was the second. So not too bad. They still don't look anything like the picture in the book, but oh well. Okay. So here is some. Worn lipstick. And some tumble glass. And I'll put a little stormy sky in there just to see what happens. Okay. Now, I'm going to grab a skewer. I don't know how this will work with these, but I just kind of want to see if I can get more of a pattern in here. No, not really. They're going to get all muddled up. Okay. Well, I gave it a shot. Okay, so this is with the treated cardstock. And dunk it in, press it down till you feel that it's wet, and pull it up. And it's okay. Not fantastic. I'm going to try it with a piece of cardstock now that I treated and see what happens. I treated some cardstock last night. Put a few more drops in here first. Here we go. And let's see what we get. Oh, well, that's pretty nice. Not too bad. 
still doesn't look anything like the picture in the book, but at least there's some color on it. Okay. Um, so now the other medium that I wanted to try was um, pastels. Um, Julia, the author, said that you can scrape pastels onto the surface of the water and that should work also. So let me empty this. Sorry guys, I really need to learn how to edit. Maybe I'm going to learn how to edit before I... Whoops! Oh, I just spilled water everywhere. Maybe I'm going to learn how to edit before I make my next video. But I'm going to take my craft knife and scrape a few of these colors over the surface of the water. if anything happens. I can't even see that first color anymore. Okay, I'm going to put more of that first color down. So if you guys can't see this very well, I know there's a glare from the light on the water. Okay, this is my treated cardstock. I'm going to put it treated side down. And we'll see what happens. This one I'm not going to press all the way down. Maybe I'll press it down that way. Ooh. Oh, cool. Look at that, you guys. Wow. Okay, this is my favorite one yet. Okay, so get your pastels out and scrape them into the water, because apparently the other stuff that I'm using doesn't work. But this is really cool. Wow. So, at least I found one that worked. I'm so happy that this was not a complete disaster now. Okay, I'm going to try it with um, regular cardstock. And I'm going to scrape a little bit more in there. And you can scrape your um, your watercolors, you know, your pan watercolors in here too, and that might work. You might even be able to um, shave little, you know, pieces off your watercolor pencils and try that also. All right, I'm gonna try and mix this up a little with this skewer, so I don't have all the colors in one spot. Okay. Now this is treated cardstock. Put it treated side down. Lift up. I have a great pattern on the back side and a great pattern on the front. So this is really great. I love the way this turned out. So I think from now on when I do this technique, technique I'll be using um, pastels and shaving them into the water. Um, so I guess that that's it for today. I'm going to dry all these and I'm going to take pictures of them and put them on my blog so that you can see um, what works and what doesn't work. And um, I guess I will see you guys maybe later this week. We're doing another marbling technique with um, with sizing this time, so hopefully that one will go a little bit better. Oh, I forgot to do my watercolors. I was going to do these watercolors, but I know they're not going to come out as dramatic as the pastels did, so I don't even think I'm going to try that. I might try that off camera and then um, if it's anything, you know, really jaw-dropping, I'll show you guys. 
But um, that's it for water marbling. If you guys have any questions, um, just let me know. And um, like I said, I'm going to put the link for the um, Sumanagashi video down below. You guys, it, it's a really short video. You guys have to watch it. It's just amazing. And um, I guess that's it. So thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you play along. And if you do do this and you get better results than I did, please, you know, share, let me know, send me pictures, do a video, uh, because I would really like to, you know, get better at this. So thanks for watching, everyone, and I'll talk to you next time.